Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps, and welcome to episode four in our series, teaching you how to make the full iPhone game disappear in discs. So far, we have a disc on the screen which you tap, and a new disc will be spawned somewhere in the game. In this video, we are adding a score system and a level up system, so when you reach a certain score, you will then have two discs on the screen, three discs, four discs, and so on. So let's jump back into Xcode to continue. So back into Xcode and back into the game scene. So we want to begin by setting up our score system. Now for that, the two most important things are a variable to keep track of what our score is and a label to show the score. Now we will make these global within the game scene so we can set them up and affect them all over the place rather than just in one function. So we will say var score number, we start it off at zero and we want a label. So let, we will call this the score label. This would be an SK label node, open bracket, font named, and we will now use our custom font called PUSAB with a capital P. Okay, so we now have a variable called score number, which will keep track of our score, and a score label, which will show our score. So we want our score label to be on display in the scene straight away. So as soon as we move into the game scene, that label will be there. So let's move into our did move to view. And here we will now set up the score label. And because we declared this outside of a function, we haven't got to redeclare it. So we will say score label. So there's no let, no brand new setting it up as a label node. Score label, we will give it a font size of 250. Make it nice and big kind of in your face. Score label, the starting text will just be zero because we know at this point the score will always be zero. We will give it a font color of white. Now by default it is white, but it's still quite an important piece of code to know, so we do it anyway. So font color, SK color dot white color, like that. We will give it a Z position which remember is to do with the layering of one. Now notice disc has a Z position of two and that is by design because we want the disc in front of the label. Otherwise it could kind of get stuck behind the label and just get messy. And we will give it, and we'll give it a position. So CG point, so we can input an X and a Y value. X will be in the center of the screen going across. So self.size.width divided by two to find that halfway point going across the screen. And we want it fairly high up the screen. So we'll do self.size.height. And we want it about 85% of the way up because zero is at the bottom, 100% is at the top. So we times by 0.85 to get that position. Then all we got to do is add it to the scene. Otherwise we would have set it up and not made it like so. So just like that, we now have a score label. It doesn't work yet, but it's there. So let's hit run and let's check it out. So here is our score label. Currently it shows a score of zero. Doesn't work yet. So it's just kind of showing zero. So we now set it up to work and that is as simple as two short lines of code. Back into Xcode, we will now set up when we want to add a point to our score. Now in disappearing disks, that's as simple as adding one point to our score whenever we tap on a disk. And we already have all the code in place for that. So let's find the touches began and find our if statement, which says if we tapped on the disk, then remove the disk and spawn a new disk. Here, all we gotta do is take our score number and we want to add one to it. So plus equals one. So that's what we've got to do to add one to our score. Then all we have to do is update our label text to show this new score. So score label dot text equals, and we want it to show the variable score number. So between the speech marks, we'd say backwards slash open bracket, score number, close bracket. So now when we tap on a disc, add one to our score, and display this score number variable, whether it's one, whether it's 10, whether it's a million, and display that in our label. 
as quick and as simple as that. So let's hit run again. So here we go. And now when we tap on a disc, the score will go up. Very nice. So in the minute, it always stays at one disc, which you know, is pretty cool, but it's very easy. I know the discs aren't shrinking yet, which will be the whole point of the game. But even when they are, if there is one disc, it will be possibly the easiest game ever. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say, when you reach a certain score, the game will level up. And at that point, a new disc will spawn. So when you reach a certain point, you'll then have two discs on the screen. When you reach another certain point, you'll have three discs on the screen and so on. So the game will get more difficult. So back into Xcode and back into our touches began function and back just after where we have added one point to our score. So here we want to check to see if we've reached a certain score and if we have spawn a new disc. So one disc will then become two discs, two discs will become three, three become four and so on. So we're gonna use an if statement to say if score number equals equals 10. So if we reach a score of 10, we want to spawn another disc. We will use two pipe signs for or. So or score number has reached 50 or score number has reached one, two, five. You can use your own values or score number has reached 200, score number has reached 300, or score number has reached 500. Open curly bracket and drop a line. As always, it should put in your closing curly bracket for you, but if it doesn't, put that in now. So now, if score number reaches 10, we want to add a new disc. If it reaches 50, we want to add a brand new disc. 1 to 5, another disc. 200, another disc. And so on for 300 and 500. Now the beautiful thing about this is that this is as simple as saying spawn new disc to rerun that function from the last video, which will then make us a brand new disc. Okay, so the game will now level up when we reach a score of 10, 50, 1, 2, 5, 200, 300 or 500. Okay, so that is now our level system in place. Again, as quick as that. So let's hit run. So now if we reach a score of 10, a new disc will be placed and all the way up. So there you go. We now have three discs and that will keep working all the way up through our level system. So that is now our score system and our level system all set up. As we have done that so quick, what we'll do now is I want to polish a couple of things off. At the moment, when we tap these discs, they just disappear. It looks very almost jumpy. So what we're gonna do is make them fade out very quickly when we tap them, it just looks a bit more polished. Okay, so back into Xcode. So back into touches began and back to where when we tap on a disc. So at the moment, we are just deleting the disc. You know, it gets the job done. It's not very pretty. So what we're gonna do is delete this line. And instead, we're gonna run a sequence of actions which will fade out the disc and then delete the disc. So we're gonna take taps node from up here stores all the information about that node. So if we affect tapped node, it will affect our disk. Dot run action, and this will be an SK action dot sequence. Now a sequence is a list of actions, and as it's a list, it is an array, which needs square brackets. And we will keep this looking nice and tidy. So let's drop some lines. So what do we want to happen to our disk? Well, we want to fade it out very quickly. So we will use skaction.fade out with duration of 0.1. So it will fade out over a tenth of a second comma, and then we want to delete it. So skaction.remove from parent. So now when we tap on a disk, it will fade out and then delete. This will make it look better, but it could lead to a potential glitch. Because in this 0.1 second, the disc is still in play, even though it's been tapped. So you could, in theory, tap this disc lots of times and get lots of points and spawn lots of new discs, which would just completely mess up the game. 
To avoid this, what we're going to do, we're going to take tapped node and remove the name. So if you tap on this node again, the name will now not equal disk object, so you can't retap it. So even though it's still there, it's fading out, and because we have taken away the name, it has taken this node out of play, so you can't keep tapping it. Potential glitch avoided. Now there's one more thing we want to do, and that will be to play a sound effect when we tap on a disk. And that sound effect is called correct. Sounds a bit like this. I will be honest and say when this sound plays every single time you touch a disc, it does get a bit annoying. But I wanted to have sound effects to show you guys how to use sound effects and how to code them. So just brace yourself for that sound getting pretty annoying pretty quick. So for our sound effect, we could set the sound effects up as an action and get it to play when we tap on a disc. But if we were to set it up here, there's always just a tiny bit of lag the first time it plays. It's only small, but it's noticeable. Okay, and we obviously want these games to be as awesome as possible. And even though it's just, it's about 0.2 of a second, if that, but it drives me crazy. So to avoid that, what we're gonna do, we will set up this action globally within the scene and then simply run it. So outside of a function, we always do it at the top to keep it tidy in the game scene. We will say let, and we will call this play correct sound effect. This will equal an sk action dot, and now for a sound effect, we use sk action dot play sound file named. Here we have the file name, which is correct with a capital C dot wav. So correct dot web wait for completion will not be a factor here and that's only a factor in a sequence so we say false if you're wondering wait for completion in a sequence you can set up a sound effect to play and the next action to either wait until that sound effect is finished before running or to run straight away so that is why wait for completion is an option but play correct sound effect now is an action to play our sound effect when we tapped on a disc so back to touches began. All we gotta do is say self, we want to run this on the actual scene, dot run action, play correct sound effect, which will now play that action that we just set up to play the sound effect. And that's it. So now when we tap on a disc, it will fade out before deleting with a sound effect playing. And these little extra features, they might not seem like much, but in the long run, they make such a difference to your game. I mean, what was that? That was five lines of code and it just makes your game feel a lot smoother a lot more professional okay and that's obviously always what you want to aim for these small differences make a huge impact in the long run so now let's hit run and you should see and feel the game already start to become a lot more polished so here we go as you can see when we tap a disc now it will fade out and the sound effect will play so already you can see this game starting to become more polished and working its way towards being a finished game. And as quick as that, our score system is done, our level system is done, and a few extra bits have been polished off. Next time, we'll take care of the disc getting smaller, which is the entire point of the game, and ending the game if a disc entirely disappears. So as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, which I really hope you did, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.